Welcome to my weekly market roundup. I am Sagar Nandi. I am the designer and developer of Q trading systems and techniques. Earlier, I worked in information technology, mostly based in Singapore. Nowadays, I live in Thailand by the sea and I primarily trade stocks as a short term or swing trader. You may contact me using my email ID tradingprofitably at gmail.com and follow me on Twitter, YouTube and also in my traders forum. First the disclaimer, this demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Q trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. I am not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. I will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, in today's topics, I will analyze oil and gold using technical charts. They tend to impact related stocks. Then I will look for potential trades using Q analysis. How I do that? I first look at the market to see if it is bullish, bearish or neutral. I will study that using the market ETFs. Once I know the market's strength or weakness, I then drill down into the sector and industry level. If the market is bullish, I look for bullish industries and if the market is bearish, I look for weak industries. Third step is to look for stocks with strength or weakness, fundamental strength or weakness that is aligned with the industry's force. So if the industry is bullish, I am going to look for fundamentally strong stocks if the industry is bearish, I am going to look for fundamentally weak stocks. Once I have found a strong market, bullish industry, strong fundamental stock, the last step will be to look for a low risk technical buy point. And if the market, industry and the fundamental all are weak, then the last step will be to look for a technical short point. I find those technical entry points using unambiguous Q indicators and trade setups. I will carry out this top down analysis today as well. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let me start with the live system. I am beginning the commodities analysis with oil, the oil ETF USO and looking at it using the weekly backdrop chart template and the daily entry or hop on chart template. Together I call this at a glance template because this template can help you decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge in only a few seconds. If you are watching my previous market roundups then you know in the last market roundup I mentioned USO was inside a triangle pattern bound by resistance memory trend line automatically drawn smart trend line at the top and support memory trend line at the bottom. This week it is remaining inside the triangle pattern. In the daily it was and is still bound by the resistance memory trend lines, multiple of them, and watermark support pivot level. I mentioned that you may not take a trade, swing trade in USO unless it can break out of this triangle pattern. I am maintaining the same view this week as well. Could you trade US oil last few days or weeks you could and let me explain how 
this is same instrument anyway so I am now looking at it using the daily entry chart template and 10 minute fine tune or precise entry template many people are comfortable taking trend following trades and I am also one of them I am also equally comfortable taking reversal trades and one technique I use is to see if an instrument is coming to a memory resistance line and reversing from there that happened on this Wednesday 21st August when price came to this memory resistance line and reversed using the 10 minute chart you can see that on Wednesday price opened at this price level that was higher than previous days high that was a gap up open soon after open the early range low and the early range high pivot levels were drawn and then price fell below early range low that signal a gap short day trade and I was also using the memory resistance that was there in the daily chart to make my short trade decision the short entry was at this price point when USO broke below the early range low and the stop loss was at the higher end of the early range just above early range high after that price dropped at the close of the day which was at this price point you had a large profit relative to the risk taken in the trade if you wanted you could close the full position or as I would prefer looking at the gap up and then reversal move at a memory resistance I would book partial profit and continue to hold partial position with a trailing stop after that as you can see oil dropped further and you may continue to hold the remaining position with trailing stop trying to let profit run this is how you could use the memory resistance level and a gap short trade opportunity to take a very profitable trade in US oil on Wednesday now I move on to gold using the gold ETF GLD this is probably the strongest instrument now the relative performance line is sharply tilting up showing that it is hugely outperforming the market the weekly backdrop candle color is remaining cyan for three successive weeks this week's candle shape and color both are bullish last week I mentioned that gold was bullish but it was close to the upper boundary level if you already took a long position in gold earlier then you could continue to hold the position however it is too extended to take a new gold trade using Q technique right now oil was weak range bound gold was strong that is not saying well about the bullishness of the market you will find the same insight from the market ETF study here I am looking at S&P 500 ETF SPY last week in the market roundup and even the week before that for two successive weeks I expressed my market outlook as neutral to bearish this week the weekly backdrop candle color is bearish magenta and the shape is also bearish in the daily chart prices moving in a narrow range on Friday it fell sharply but 
closed right at the memory support line. The weekly is saying that it is bearish. Therefore, I am not going to look for a long trade right now. At the same time, daily is right at the memory support line. Therefore, I am not going to look for any short trade either. From the volume bars, you can see that SPY has dropped for four successive weeks. Looking back, that has not happened for a very long time. That is showing a bearish picture and you will find a similar picture from the other market ETFs as well. NASDAQ ETF QQQ in the weekly chart backdrop candle color is bearish shape is also bearish it stopped right above the memory support line in the daily chart price dropped heavily on Friday and it closed just below the memory support trend lines a very similar picture like SPY the weekly is bearish however it is near memory support both in weekly and also daily. Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF DIA an identical picture the weekly backdrop candle color and shape both are bearish on Friday price dropped but stopped right at the memory support line. Russell 2000 ETF IWM a similar picture but slightly more bearish weekly backdrop color and weekly candle shape both are bearish relative performance line is tilting down showing it is underperforming the market for several past market roundups I mentioned that IWM is the weakest of the four market ETFs and I am continuing to maintain that view in the daily it dropped sharply on Friday how is it different from the other ETFs it is different because there is no memory support nearby the next memory support is far below if the market continues to go down then the easiest shorting opportunity may come in IWM and not in SPY QQQ or DIA the market ETFs are bearish what about the sectors I share my market view and also stock analysis regularly in Twitter on Friday after market close I shared this picture showing the sector performance across one day that is Friday and previous five days that is previous Thursday to Thursday in the previous five days all the 11 sectors were up none was down however on Friday none was up all the sectors were down if you look at the magnitudes then you can see that Friday's down move was almost equal to the up move of the previous five days I could see this shift in market strength from strength to weakness in real time using the sector and industry rotation analysis tool. Let me analyze the sectors in a bit more detail. Sometimes the sectors are aligned with the market. Those are the times I like to take a new trade and if the sectors are not in sync with the market move then I try to avoid taking new trends now the sector is also very bearish here I am looking at one month sector performance the red bar represents this week's performance green bar previous week's performance and the blue bars performance of two weeks before that any bar coming to the 
right of the zero line shows the sector went up any bar to the left of the zero line shows the sector went down all the red bars are to the left of the zero line showing the sectors went down and some of them went down by very large percentages energy was and is continuing to be the weakest sector in last four weeks it is down by probably around 19 percent all the sectors are down including utilities real estate which were positive earlier those were the defensive sectors and now all the sectors are down significantly that is showing a bearish picture at the sector level as well the graphs that i shared regarding sector performance and the graphs you can see here in my sector industry rotation tool they provide a snapshot of what happened in the past you get a better view of how the sectors are changing how the rotation is taking place from the scorecard and heat map here i can see all the 11 sectors across 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently over recent periods cyan represents strength magenta represents weakness this scorecard and heat map instantly shows you how the sectors are transitioning from strength to weakness or vice versa over time. If I sort by the five day period, then you can see that energy, materials, industrials, these are the weakest sectors. The strongest ones are consumer discretionary consumer staples utilities if you look at communication services you can see from the color transition that it was weaker earlier and now it is gaining strength that is the pattern you can see from consumer discretionary as well it was weaker earlier and now switch to strength of our five day period on last wednesday i had the live market meet webinar it is open to the public you may register for the next session from the superior profit home page from the webinar menu in that market meetup I observed and I shared with you that on Wednesday consumer discretionary was very strong on that day using real-time data I showed that out of the 10 best performing industries nine of them were in consumer discretionary sector that is quite unusual it was very strong that day that is reflected in the five day strength of the sector. If you open up the more recent periods, last two day and one day, now you can see that that strength has vanished. Though over five day period, consumer discretionary is the strongest sector. On Friday, it was the second worst performing sector. The worst performing sector was energy, which was weak for a long time. Using this rotation analysis tool, I could see the consumer discretionary strength deteriorating in real time and I could adjust my trading decisions based on that. Now looking at the one day picture, you wouldn't consider taking a long position in consumer discretionary, isn't it? Let me drill down into the industry level. I tend to say that sector level, like the market level, is too broad. Therefore, to make swing trading decisions, you are better off looking at the industry level and buy into strong industries and 
short into weak industries. If you look at the 10 worst performing industries on Friday, then you can see many of them. In fact, one, two, three, four, five, six of them are in consumer discretionary. There are several other consumer discretionary industries nearby. Some of the worst performing industries. This reinforces my view that it is not the right time to take a long trade in consumer discretionary sector. At the same time, if you look at the color pattern of the scorecard, you see all these industries are now weak for a very long time. If they start to turn around, then they will give very lucrative buying opportunities of fundamentally strong stocks, most likely undervalued stocks. You can catch them right at the bottom as the industries start to go up, if the industries start to go up. And when will the industry start to go up? We don't know, but whenever it happens, you can find that out in real time from this sector industry rotation analysis tool. Normally, I like to drill down to the stock level and look for trade setups that are aligned with the market level and sector level. I am not doing that today because my market view is now bearish. You can see from the SPY chart, as I explained earlier, the weekly backdrop candle color and shape both are bearish. How far daily is right on top of the memory support line. So weekly is bearish daily on top of the support line. This is not a time I like to take a new trade in any direction. You may continue to follow me on Twitter and if you didn't follow me on Twitter, you may do that. When I see a good trade setup, what is a good trade setup? That is low risk opportunity and where the trade setup has market level, sector industry level, fundamental level and technical level, all forces align either in the bullish direction or in the bearish direction. That is a good trade setup in my view. And when I find those opportunities, I share them, some of them at least, on my Twitter page. I also share them in my forum where I can provide more detail. The 360 degrees analysis as I call it, I share the sector industry rotation analysis, fundamental analysis, as well as technical analysis. By the way, if you look at my forum posts and look at the USA market posts in the recent period, you will see several of them are in the short direction. In fact, I started taking short trades, probably well ahead of others started to think that the market is getting weaker. You may follow my trading ideas on the Twitter page as well as from the forum page. Let me summarize. For the previous two weeks, my market outlook was neutral to bearish. This week, the market dropped. All the ETFs drop, the market ETFs, SPY, QQQ, DIA and IWM. IWM is continuing to remain the weakest. Oil is range bound, gold is very strong. Those are all bearish. Sector level is very bearish. All the sectors went down. Everything in the market looks bearish. However, the market ETFs, several of them, in fact, QQQ, DIA, and SPY, all these three market ETFs are right on top of memory trend line support. Often, these memory trend lines, that is automatically drawn smart trend lines in the Q system, 
they provide robust support. That is why though my market outlook is bearish, I am not suggesting taking any short trade right now. If the market continues to go down, then you may start taking short trades. There are plenty of opportunities. That is opportunities where the industries are weak. Many, many industries are weak now. And you have a lot of weak fundamental stocks, either in terms of valuation or in terms of growth, in those weak industries that are at or near their 52-week high. Some of them are already starting to go down. In either case, you can look for shorting opportunities in them. These fundamentally weak stocks in the weak industries. You may look for the short setup using reversal setups like headwind, box or bounce or you can look for trend following short setup using Q go with flow setup. You could find the trading opportunities easily running Q scan program that is Q sonar. I demonstrate the use of the Q systems on the live market on every Wednesday. I'll do that next Wednesday as well. You may register for the webinar from Superior Profit homepage. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Feel free to follow my trading ideas on the Twitter page, YouTube videos and also in the forum page. All of these are open to the public. And also feel free to drop a note to me on my email id tradingprofitably at gmail.com. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in my next market roundup session and also in the Wednesday live market meet webinar. Have a great week and trade profitably.